Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're actually gonna spend a little bit of time uh, from Genesis to Luke, uh, crossing the, the Bible here. Uh, Genesis 47, verses two to six, first of all, and then we'll move to Luke chapter 15, verses one to seven. And uh, I'd like to read those for you. And then let's, let's think just for a few minutes today about this calling of God to associate, but not integrate. Associate, but not assimilate. And, and so if you would, hear the, the word of the Lord. Joseph took five of his brothers with him and presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked the brothers, what is your occupation? They replied, we, your servants, are shepherds like our ancestors, just like our ancestors. We have come to live here in Egypt for a while, for there is no pasture for our flocks in Canaan. The famine is very severe there, so please, we request permission to live in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your father and brothers have joined you here, choose any place in the entire land of Egypt for, for them to live. Give them the best land of Egypt. Let them live in the region of Goshen. And if any of them have special skills, put them in charge of my livestock too. And Joseph brought, uh, brought in his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So from Genesis 47 now, if you would, let's hear from the Lord in Luke 15. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. So Jesus, Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one who, that is lost and, until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God, than over ninety-nine others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. So, friends, in, in Genesis, we uh, saw yesterday uh, Joseph instructing his brothers on how it is that they're to present themselves before, uh, before Pharaoh in a very specific way. And he, he tells them that the goal of this is for them to get into Goshen, to live in that, in that region. Now, uh, part of this was that they are people who had animals, and so they, they wanted to get to Goshen because there would be pasture land there. Uh, Goshen is... is the, the land of, of the, the Nile River Delta. So it's a, a very fertile area and there would be pasture land there even during drought uh, conditions. There'd still be, be vegetation there. So that's an important aspect. But the, but the other thing that's, that's very important on, on Joseph's mind is, uh, is this need for separation for the Hebrew people. Uh, it's revealed in uh, verse 40, at the end of chapter 46, rather, that the Egyptians despise shepherds and also apparently sheep. I don't, I don't know what they've got against sheep. They seem pretty harmless to me, but, um, but they, they despise sheep as well. And Joseph also wants to make it known that they're Hebrews. Now, we learn back in 43, chapter 43, verse 32, that the Egyptians also despise Hebrews. And so he wants it to be made known that they're shepherds, uh, despise shepherds, but also that they are despised Hebrews. And, and so there's this balance that Joseph's working here where he wants the people to have good land where they can pasture their animals, but he also wants separation. He also doesn't want them to mix with the Egyptians. He knows that it's essential that they not integrate with the Egyptians, uh, which he knows that they would start doing if, if they were in the midst of the Egyptians. They'd start thinking like they think and 
valuing things as they do and ultimately worshiping false gods as they did. And this, friends, is an essential lesson for us uh, because we're meant to be holy. That is, we're meant to be set apart for the Lord, set apart in, in how we think, how we live, what we do, what we value, how we worship. There is, a, I think we could say, a constant temptation to integrate, to assimilate, just to kind of submit to the culture that's around us. And, and this is an, 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 an important lesson, essential lesson, as we consider the unfortunate shift in our culture away from Judeo-Christian uh, worldview and values. And so we have this, this truth that we find in, in Genesis where the people are settling and, and Joseph wants separation for them. He knows that they need that separation. And yet we see, uh, we see in Luke 15 God's heart for the lost. God in Christ has declared here that all persons are worth an all-out search from God. This is why Jesus came. It's why He died and rose again for us. And so you see the religious leaders, they, they get the part, the, the point that Joseph's making about, about separation. They, they're, they're like, man, why, why is he associating with such notorious sinners? So they get that point about needing to be separate, but what they don't see and what they don't understand is, in fact, their own need for a Savior, but not just that. They don't see the Savior's love for the lost. And so, friends, when it comes to us, we, we truly must guard our hearts and minds, guard our lives against the pressure from, uh, from the world to, uh, to assimilate. We have to avoid those situations that we know would lead toward our compromise, that could be a temptation, that could pressure us to compromise. But friends, we also have to go where the Lord sends us. We also have to love as He loves. We have to be willing to share the good news where the Lord gives us opportunities to, to do so because to be holy is to be separate. It is to, to be separate in our thinking and our values and, and the purpose of our lives and so forth. But to be holy, friends, is to be set apart for God also for His mission, for His purposes. So even as we come into situations where not everyone is a believer, where there are values being lived out that are not biblical, that are not our own, we do, friends, have the opportunity to bring, to bring the influence of the truth, to bring the Lord and His good news into those situations. And, and so we guard our hearts. We guard our lives, but we also look for opportunities. As we look from Genesis into Luke 15 and see that indeed the lost, Jesus de declares, are worth an all-out search. And thanks be to God for that. Because those of us who are found know that that was not always the case. We were lost and now we're found. We were dead and now we're alive in Jesus Christ. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.